Hi, I'm Victor. In this video, we are going to explore the concept of ubiquitous computing. Let's first define the term. Ubiquitous computing is a concept of software engineering and computer science where computing is made to appear anytime and everywhere. Ubiquitous computing can occur using any device, in any location, and in any format. It is the use of computers in everyday life. This is also known as pervasive computing. The terms ubiquitous and pervasive both mean existing everywhere. This is a post-desktop model of human-computer interaction in which information processing has been thoroughly integrated into everyday objects and activities. This is the idea that almost any device, from clothing to tools, to appliances, to cars, to homes, can be embedded with chips to connect the device to an infinite network of devices. It supports one user to many computing tasks and in one device with multiple computing tasks, like a smartphone. The father of ubiquitous computing is Mark Weiser, who was the chief scientist at Xerox PARC, Palo Alto Research Center in the U.S. He coined the term ubiquitous computing around 1988. He articulated the idea of ubiquitous computing. He stated that the highest ideal of ubiquitous computing is to make computers so embedded, so fitting, so natural. Another known personality in this concept is Manuel Castells. He suggested in his book, The Rise of the Network Society, that there is an ongoing shift from already decentralized, standalone microcomputers and mainframes towards entirely pervasive computing. In his model of a pervasive computing system, Castles used the example of the internet as the start of a pervasive computing system. He imagined a system where billions of miniature, ubiquitous interconnected devices will be spread. The goal of ubiquitous computing is to create an environment where the connectivity of devices are embedded in such a way that connectivity is unobtrusive and always available. Such devices' characteristics may be very tiny, small, inexpensive, and robust network processing. It is either mobile or embedded in almost any type of objects such as cars, tools, appliances, clothing, and various consumer goods, all communicating through increasingly interconnected networks. Here are some examples of ubiquitous computing. Computer sensors in your floor that can monitor your physical health. Computer in your car that can assist you when you drive to work. Replacement of old electric meter with smart meter. Smart meters are tools used to manage and record electricity and performance of electronic devices in the home. One of the advantages of smart meter is it eliminates manual monthly meter readings. Automatic intelligent lighting system and cooling system. The ubiquitous computing environment might interconnect lighting and environmental controls with personal biometric monitors woven into clothing so that illumination and heating conditions in a room might be modulated continuously and gradually. This is a smart thermostat. It can be controlled with a phone, tablet, smart speaker, or other internet-connected device. Smart thermostats typically allow you to schedule your desired temperature settings, and you can also incorporate them into home automation systems. Refrigerators that are aware of their suitably tagged contents and are able to plan a variety of menus. An interactive whiteboard. It is a large interactive display as a whiteboard for education or business presentations. It can either be a standalone touchscreen computer, used independently to perform tasks and operations, or a connectable apparatus used as a touchpad to control computers from a projector. Use of RFID tags with both barcodes and QR codes. It allows the consumer to connect to the Internet of Things with a simple scan of a smartphone or tablet. Making objects marked with a QR code or barcode would mean improving the retail environment for consumers, because they will be more educated about the item before purchasing and they will be able to check for an item's availability. Let's compare virtual reality and ubiquitous computing. Virtual reality puts people inside a computer-generated three-dimensional environment. On the other hand, 
ubiquitous computing focuses the computer to live out here in the world with people. Here are some challenges of ubiquitous computing. Privacy and security. In a fully networked world with ubiquitous sensor-equipped devices, several privacy and security issues may arise. The people in this environment will be worried about their privacy since there is the potential of total monitoring. Ubiquitous computing has a social impact on our society. For example, how will an individual know if they are within a smart environment where embedded devices are gathering data? Is it ethical to gather information from individuals without their knowledge? Next is volatility. Not only does the world change, but also the set of users, devices, and software components in an environment. They change over time. With this, the trending device might be replaced fast by the technologies that are to be released in the coming days. Support for the current technology may then be stopped. This results in incurring more expenses to individuals and businesses. Impromptu interoperability. This means many technology-producing companies produce their own products speaking their own proprietary language. This leads to non-interoperability between devices from different companies. This results to lack of systems, administrations, or regulations. Here are some advantages brought to us by ubiquitous computing. It processes information effectively and enhances effortless user experience. It allows us to manage information efficiently. It removes complexity of new technology since they are designed to be used on a day-to-day -day basis. It is designed to be integrated for man's use seamlessly or invisibly. It allows socialization and faster guided decision making. Here are some uses of ubiquitous computing. Information access, text or multimedia document retrieval, like when we are using an electronic book. Those uses can be performed through the help of the following hardware and software technologies, like automatic indexing. Automated indexing is the process of assigning and arranging index terms without human intervention. The index is produced using algorithms, rule sets, or machine learning. Next is networking, speech recognition, wireless protocols, and user-sensitive devices. To end our discussion about ubiquitous computing, let's discuss its key elements, which are ubiquitous sensing, access, middleware, and networking. Ubiquitous sensing uses a sensor. It is a device that responds to a physical stimulus, such as heat, light, sound, pressure, magnetism, or a particular motion, and transmits a resulting impulse as for measurement or operating a control. This gives systems eyes and ears, and adding more awareness to ubiquitous computing. Ubiquitous access represents the ability for a cloud service to be widely accessible by devices, transport protocols, interfaces, and security technologies. Example is when mobile computers or wearable computers access information. Next is ubiquitous middleware. It is typically a software. It shields an application from low-level details that is interacting with ubiquitous networking, sensing, and access. The last key element is ubiquitous networking. It is the distribution of communications, infrastructure, and wireless technologies throughout the environment to enable continuous connectivity. Here's an example where all these elements are identified. The floor detects user movements. Through its sensors, which send signals and are accepted by a device with application software. The device sends data to the cloud and useful or relevant information needed may be returned. The information will then be shown to the screen and affect devices. This next example is from the article entitled Google's Smart Bathroom Patent Put Sensors in Your Toilet, Tub, and Mirror by Christian De Looper on August 10, 2016 at www.digitaltrends.com. The patent describes sensors in a bath mat that measures heart rate through the body's electrical patterns. It has a camera in the bathroom mirror 
which would be able to detect things like skin color variations. It has sensors in the bathtub, creating an ultrasonic bathtub that could perform an echo test. Additional sensors may also be installed to detect blood pressure and to help keep track of the nervous, endocrine, and muscular systems. All those data could be collected and sent to health professionals with users' consent. According to Google, those collected data could provide much more valuable data as it's collected daily rather than once every few months. The patent was filed by Jeffrey Rogers, who was Director of Engineering at Google, when the patent was filed. Here are the references. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to leave your feedback. Please consider liking and sharing this video too. Again, this is Victor. Thank you all for watching.